So this is going to be my last, my second response to the um, last discussion corresponding to Moore's account over the second half of the book. You know, um, I guess you could say it's the totality of the book, the entire book. But I kind of wanted to use this response to reflect on a earlier response I had given, and that one was, you know, how Mustafa's mother, she told him the type of life he would live, you know, early on. And how, you know, I think I could be wrong. I haven't looked back. But I feel like they told him they'd live a life of travel, of, you know, of travel, you know, because that was right around the time when the conflict was starting to the south, I want to say. And, you know, it was all the conflict of them fleeing from the Spanish. And... I'm trying to get to safety. Um, but, you know, over the book, I noticed more, like in, in my initial response, I talked about how, you know, the girl who was beaten, who had her hands broken, you know, she was probably told she was going to be just a wonderful, you know, um, what's the word, sorry, sewer, sewer, you know, she's going to make all these wonderful, beautiful garments and all these wonderful, beautiful decorations and it just never came to be. And, you know, throughout the book, there are several other times when kind of that happens, you know, like, um, with Osmoy, the the woman who Mustafa falls in love with, you know, until the day she goes with him to explore as one of his guides, you know, she probably thought she'd never get to leave the village, she'd be stuck in that area, you know, she'd be around her family members all of her life, she's probably told, you know, while she was growing up, you know, this is how it is. We're Indians. We were hunter gatherers. We walk or we roam around, you know. But at the moment that she chose to go with Mustafa and his group, that all changed. And it kind of, you know, it's like also, I feel like it's to a lesser extent, but when Durante's wife has her child, has his child, you know, he could have sent her on any, many, like, innumerable paths like I'd like to know more about her story but he sent her to the covenant and you know <laughs> it's just like it's just another path that we don't really know the truly ending of but I guarantee right then it was oh you're gonna be, become one closer to God you know he became one very loose from God and I guess you could say that was a his attempt to save her from her more savage nature from being born of a Indian mother, you know. But, you know, it's just all the people that accompanied them on their travels who passed away, they probably never thought that would occur to them. You know, they probably told that they were going to be getting all these high regards when they came back from overseas, you know. And I'm sorry for saying you know, but it's just the word I correspond with the lies, speak a lot to utilize, to expand on my ideas. Um, but this book, it's, it's an unraveling story that shows how no one can truly predict what's going to happen to you in the future. They can attempt to, like I can say, you know, that kid, you know what, I want to be a teacher and I can say, oh, you know, this kid, he's going to be, a, you know, a great teacher, he's going to be a great president. And I may be right, but I'm going. I, you're going to live a life of presidential treatment, you know. But no one ever knows. You know, I was told I had a weird instant. No, you'll probably think you as well might think it's weird when a woman randomly walked up to me before I transferred here to Harden Simmons and told me about how she had a vision that I would be a great religious. Um, I have a great position in church one day. And, you know, I haven't made any strides yet on that aspect, but you never know. But it's just like people, they, they come up with these ideals of what will become of you. And sometimes you may meet it, sometimes you may not. And I just feel like this book is a very nice realization of that. Thank you.